All right, Kellen Quinn, how you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. This is a, uh, it's nice to see you again. It's nice to see you always. Uh, how long are you in town for? Uh, till tomorrow. What are you doing here? Shooting a music video. Yeah? Yeah. For? For a song called Be Happy with Royal and the Serpent. You've been doing a lot of collabs. Yeah. Yeah, I usually will, I mean, the last record, we didn't really do any collabs. I think Benji was the only one that was on it. Um... I don't like to give parts away, but I felt like a fun album to give parts away on this on this record. I mean, the I thought the record was look. You know, when, when you went into doing doing this record, were you like, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I am actually gonna like have people on it and do collab stuff with it because it <clears throat> the, all of the songs really feel like they fit. You know how sometimes you hear a song that's like a collab and they're like they just shove that in there yeah yeah doesn't feel like that here yeah i mean if there's been plenty of collabs that we've tried to do and i get the song back and it doesn't sound good and that's really hard to tell somebody that you admire i'm not going to say who it was but <laughs> that you admire and say like hey we're going we're not going to use your part but like if it doesn't work for the song then it's not going to go on the song you know well, well i mean what you guys did with this last album um first of all when when did you when did you write it so a few of the songs were written at home during the pandemic, but then the rest of it was just done in the studio in Nashville and then also in LA. So I think that a part of it was just like, we were excited to make music again. It was the first time our band has ever had like time home uh, for the pandemic. So like that was really good for us to be normal humans for a little bit and kind of grow up <laughs> do you think that it was being a normal it wasn't it was like the weirdest yes and no but i mean like for me like when our band like had time off it wasn't really time off it was like time off to make a record and then go back on back on the road so every time i was like home it was like one foot in one foot out and so like this was like a time where it was like there's nothing for you to do other than just be home and it was like the best thing for my my soul, my family, and everybody. Speaking of, how is Copeland? She's great. She's great. She's uh, she's always tasking me with like weird crap. Like, I got her uh, a new iPad, and it has like a a case on it that you can type on. Because she said she wanted to like type things, and she wants to have like a cursor and all this stuff. So I give it to her, and then she's like, "Hey." can you watch this YouTube video and figure out how to like assign these keys to the keyboard so that I can play Roblox and I can use my keyboard? And I'm like, I don't know how to do this as a bug. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, dude. I'm not, I'm not that technical. I'm not that technologically advanced. So it's like, uh, me, she, dude, me neither. Like, this is like, this is all yeah. too much for me. Yeah. Like, so she will get like these crazy schemes though. Like every day there's like a new scheme and she wants me to like figure out how to like make it happen. I'm like, do you, do you, are you like seeing her as your, you, like you as a little kid, uh, like scheming and doing, like, is yeah. it, is it weird to watch your daughter grow up as, you know, there are parts of you yeah. in her? Definitely. But I mean, like she has like tech, she has like all this technology at her fingertips. So it's like, it's even worse. I think <laughs> for me, it was like, I had like toys and action figures and stuff. Oh yeah. We had our guys. Yeah. Dude. We, we had our dudes. We that had we played our guys. With. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I was actually telling my wife this and also brought it up to my dad. I was like, dude, why didn't you buy me a guitar when I was younger? Cause I'm learning how to play now, but I'm like, I was grounded so much in my room all the time that I could have actually used that. And I could have like made it <laughs> <laughs> into something <laughs> into constructive. Something, yeah. Did, did you, and is she into that? Are, are you, okay. Are you, are you like raising her in a way that you wish that you were raised? Like, like, like that, like, just like that example, like, are you, mm -hmm. did you grab, grab her a guitar? Are you like making your time instead of like just playing on fucking iPads? Are you being like, do something instructive if I fucking ground you? Yeah. Uh, she has like an electronic drum set that she wanted, but my stepson actually took it into his room and now he wants to play drums. So do they look at you like your weirdo or do they look at you like your dad? Uh, both like they let me know that i'm a weirdo so it keeps me like grounded you know but like dad most of the time yeah i mean like when they listen to the albums and like do you they show do. them do you show they, they don't i mean yeah they they have to hear it because i listen to like mixes and stuff in the car 
so they'll have like an opinion. It's funny because like my oldest, my oldest stepson works at Dick's Sporting Goods, and for whatever reason, they play Legends off of our gossip <laughs> album in there, <laughs> and they'll text me shit like, "We can be Legends after all, so make sure that you remember that or never forget." It or that's something, so you know? fucking funny, dude. Yeah. Does he think? I mean, does he think that's cool? No, he thinks it's funny. You know, like. He'll say, like, this is my stepdad, and he looks nothing like me, and he's, like, six foot something, like, super tall, blonde hair, and they're like, no, it's not. Like, they just think he's lying if yeah. I can work. Yeah. Dude, th- but I mean, like, does Copeland, like, is she listen, is she listen to lyrics? Because some of the lyrics on the new album are, spe- like, are uh, dark, darky, yeah. darky she, guys. She, um, yeah, she... She's like probably the only one that thinks it's like cool that I'm in a band and every once in a while she'll like drop it on people and be like, yeah, my dad's in a band. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? She has a great attitude about um, that. Um, but she just thinks it's like, I don't know. She'll just be like, why do you always sing like this? Or why do you always like write stuff like that? You know? Does she, does she, I mean, does she realize that like you have one of the, uh, you know, the, does she realize that her dad has a voice in this scene that nobody else really does or does she listen to anything else that is adjacent she listens to a lot of pop stuff like but it's weird because like i feel like kids like the new generation of kids they just listen to like well they a lot of them are on like tiktok and like doing that and so it's like very short attention spans like my stepson like my middle stepson there was a time where he's like, could I play some stuff on my phone? I'm like, sure. He'll listen to like a minute of a song and then change it. It's like, you don't even listen to the thing all the way through. Was like, he showing, yeah, was he showing you stuff like that, you have, that you've heard? Like, or do they show, do they show you shit that you have not heard? And you're like, yeah. damn, this is fucking tight. Well, um, some of the like newer rap shit that they listen to, I've, you know, like they'll put me onto that kind of stuff. But he listens to a lot of like he, his musical like spectrum is very, very like, wide like he listens to like thrice and he listens to like elton john and like all this kind of stuff so he's he's definitely like got a wide spectrum of music what about copeland copeland likes pop music she likes dua lipa you know i mean like she's i like dua lipa though i do too (laughs) i do too i like all this stuff yeah it's why you know it is it's one of the reasons why i love sharing the studio Mm -hmm. with zach like i you know it's supposed to not know that we do that yeah but it's like why i get i love doing it because he's always playing shit i listen to his fucking show every day yeah and a lot a lot of it's harry a lot of it's like what else do they play carlos Charlie Puth, like I love that stuff. I think they're like really well written songs. There was one actually. You want to know what? I fucking hated that Charlie Puth song he played. Uh, <laughs> uh, the last the the last episode. It's I fucking I thought it sucked. But the most of it, and also like he's I think he's like on our agency. So whatever. Who cares? Who gives a shit? But I didn't I didn't like it. But I do like most of that stuff mm. because you're like, oh, I can listen to a well written song. Right, dude. When you did this new album because you've got this this family that has a short attention span you know like we're like working with kids you know Uh now and like seeing that like you know this like were you i'm gonna make a full album that you can listen to from front to back because that's the way that i viewed this album Mm -hmm. i looked I, i listened to it from front to back and it was it's short you know like it's short Mm mm-hmm it made it one of my air, like before you go onto an airplane albums, you can do the whole fucking yeah. thing. Like, was that the the goal or was that? I think, I think like in terms of making records nowadays, it's tough to be like, we're gonna go in and make this like this record that's like super well thought out and all this stuff. Like, I feel like for the next record, I, I'm already thinking in terms of like making new music i definitely want to do it differently than we've done it for the last few years i feel like i want to go in and use actual amps i want to go in and use like real drums and i want to like do things analog rather than everything is so digital now so it's like i want to go in and fuck around with like a box full of weird pedals and just try shit like that because i feel like our band hasn't really done that in a long time it's almost been like all right you have like a certain amount of time to make a record so go make a record and then go out on the road so. Do you, do, I mean, like, you want to, like, Dave Grohl it? 
Kind of. Yeah. Like where he just like. Why not? D- does it in the garage and does the whole fucking thing. And I think yeah. that that's awesome. Yeah, I do. I want to I wanna Dave Grohl it. That's a great, I, that's a perfect terminology. Yes. Um, and I want to take our time. Like, I don't want to make a record in like a month and a half or whatever. Is that what you had to do for this? I, I feel like that's kind of how it is. Like you go in and you work with amazing, like, well, I mean. fucking our- not with Vic. <laughs> what? Oh, you- <laughs> uh, well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he's, I think that Vic is like, he, he's very critical of everything that he does. So it's like, I feel like it's, it's like an indecisiveness, you know? Uh, but it, but I think that that's what is like part of his genius is like, it, it takes him a long time to go, okay, this is good enough. Um, so. But are you stoked? Like when you put these things out? Cause I mean, they sound like they're really thought, like I re- mm-hmm. like, look, I, I've, you know, I've had a couple of interviews in here so far. I don't bring anybody in here that I don't really, really, really like. Yeah. Um, I, I like, really feel some of the inspiration that you pulled. Mm-hmm. You know, if I, I've, I've listened to the album front and back a lot at this point. Um, definitely some refused. Yep. De- you know, especially yeah. on, like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, yep. did you go into this album? Like, were you like, I'm going to make this album and I want it to sound like this? I think I think for us with this record it was kind of like a let's continue what we did with our last record but then let's also kind of revisit some of our older albums and it just kind of happened where there's a couple songs on this record that felt like our second record or like our first record you know and I while we were making it we we're like oh this is cool cuz this kind of has like a let's cheers to this vibe you know from that album um but I I definitely want to get I don't want to like stray away from like what we've been doing because I feel like this is our lane. Like the sound that we have is like our lane, but I definitely want to get more weird on but the new record. I, I th- <laughs> do you think that that's growing up? Do you think that that's just like we as we get older we're like Look, I mean, it, like let's get weird. Yeah, I mean, or I, we or we're like what you're listening to like that shit changes. Yeah, like it changes. We don't. I'm not listening to the same things that I've been listening to. You know, for the last three years it changes all of the fucking time mm-hmm. and do you think that that's like what has influenced you to be like i'm gonna get a little weird like if you're listening to like fucking lou reed you know you got a lou reed love period lou reed. yeah i love the lou love reed. the Vel- velvet underground is like one of my favorite bands yeah so um, it's like is that like does that type of shit inspire you to like be a little bit weirder go a little bit out of the box but somehow manage to like reel it back in to the band yeah i think so i think like well, I'm learning guitar right now too. So that like that's a huge part of it is like I, I can't just continue going on in this band as like the singer, you know? I'm bored with that. Like I wanna be able to like play some instruments and do some some cool shit and like evolve. And I I like punk jumping around on stage, but I also think that it'd be sick to have like a synthesizer and a fucking guitar and like play instruments while singing, you know? Like that's to me, like those are the people I look up to. Um well, have you never been able to do that? Like, you never knew how to play anything? No, I'm I'm just learning everything now. Is it... Are you, like, taking lessons, or are you, like, doing, just doing YouTube shit? Uh, a little bit of both. I'm not doing, like, in-person lessons. I'm, like, I'm watching this dude, Tomo Vojita, who, uh, like, worked at... He was, like, an instructor at Berkeley, um, and he trained, like, John Mayer and shit. And, like, he's insane. So, like, watching him and, like, learning all the fundamentals and all that stuff... The hugest issue with me, though, is, like, I've been singing for so long that I don't remember what it was like to, like, start singing and how hard that might have been. So now it just feels easy where guitar is, like, fucking hard. Like, dude, it's all hard. You know it's what I mean? so like, hard. And some people make it look so fucking easy, Exactly. Dude. But, like, I want to get to the point where I'm just, like, shredding. But, like, I'm trying to also just enjoy where I'm at and not, like, rush myself, you know? Dude, I mean, like, what was the first thing? Like, did you make a when did you make the conscious decision to be like i'm going to start picking up a fucking instrument uh probably around the pandemic when i was just sitting around doing nothing because like the old kellen was like we go to guitar center and everyone would be like jumping out of the van to go in and i'm like yeah what are we gonna what am i gonna do am, like look at this microphone yeah like microphones aren't that <laughs> sick so it's like you know the band will be talking about gear and i just like get up and leave i'm like gear but yeah. now but now it's like now i'm like super interested in like certain guitars and amps and stuff. I watch, like, videos on, like, people that show off guitar pedals, and I want to know what they do and how they work and shit. And when people make their own, I think it's the coolest thing in the entire world. I think that shit is fucking awesome. I watch that shit all the time. Yeah. Dude, I mean, like, I think 
you know, like growing up, it, it is really strange that you, this is like the year that you've started to be like, I'm going to fucking play an instrument mm-hmm. because of how successful the band has been thus far. Yeah. Nobody ever asked you to be like, you should do this. You should right. do this. Like you, this was like your decision to do that. Mm-hmm. Fucking that's great. Dude. Yeah. What? was the first thing that you played smoke on the water no, 4000 times I ref- no i refuse to do that dude <laughs> like i think the first thing that i learned how to play on guitar um i looked up how to play a boxcar racer song cuz like that was like a seminal record for me so i wanted to learn how to play that and there's it just so happens there's this like dude that decided that he's going to upload every fucking song from boxcar racer so <laughs> it just worked out like he shows you how to play everything so i i think i learned one of those and then there's this band called Sundara Karma that I like, so I wanted to learn one of their songs. I just look for shit that I listen to and I want to learn how to play. Yeah, I mean, if you listen to it long enough where you like understand, like, all right, I got to go up and down and yeah. then push this I, and this. I know enough about guitar, I feel like, and I have coordination to where it's like I can figure certain things out. Like, the only things that give me, like, issues, like, dude, I can even play, like, some solo shit. Like, the hardest thing for me right now is just, like, how hard to hold down the string when you're doing a power chord, how lightly to hold it down, like how to mute certain things. Cause like, I just want to fucking strum through everything, you know? Dude, <laughs> but, do you ever talk to your fucking band members about yeah, it? Of you're course. like, are they like, do. Are, are, do they get frustrated? Or are they like, dude, come on, Jesus Christ. No, dude, just no, like fucking... they, they're really supportive, which is super cool. Like Nick has been super supportive. Like he thinks it's great. Like when I post something or I show him a video, he's like, dude, like impressed, you know? But he like, yeah, he sent me like, how to play let you down off our new record and then also i'm learning how to play if you can't hang right now so i that's can play both those really songs. sweet that's really yeah. sweet. it's like sweet people don't realize that that's like a sweet thing to do yeah it like, is to be like this is how to do did he mm-hmm. film it for you yep filmed it and everything that's a fucking really sweet thing to do yeah i agree can you do it i'm learning right now yeah i i, I have time so it's like that's the thing like i tell myself all the time it's like I want to learn how to do it, and I want to be able to like go out there right now and start doing it. But I have time. Like, well, you have these intimate shows coming up, right? Yep. But what what does that mean? What the, what the fuck? When when we say intimate shows, like, what is that? Because in my mind, I think about like MTV da- dashboard. Mm-hmm. I, I think about like MTV Nirvana right. unplug. Like yeah. when I think of intimate, what is this? What is this going to be looking like for you guys? Punk rock as fuck. Like small venues. Yeah, which I love. Like. I think that it's cool to play smaller venues and be able to like look people in the eye and like have them be right there other than like I have a hard time sometimes playing bigger venues that like you have like the the barricade is like from the stage is here the barricades there and then people are behind that it's like no I want you right here so I can like look at you and I mean that's like how emo night like that's what we like mm-hmm. like that's what we like you know yeah. like i want to be able to have people on stage i want to be able to like touch and hug people and like do that while we're we're doing this stuff you know even yeah. though we're just pressing play right right so right. it's like so cool would are you guys gonna have people come on stage and like let them sing with you are you gonna like sure yeah i mean we did that kind of on the last tour there was like a dude that asked nick if he could come play guitar on a song so we let him do it and then um i ended up singing with this girl maggie on I think one of our acoustic songs on the last tour. So I think like it it was just a way for us to play some shows leading up to when we were young, but to like play some new shit, play some old shit, try some different stuff out, switch the set list up, like have fun with it. Dude, how does when, when we were young, like feel to you? I don't know because I haven't played it yet. (laughs) How does it feel? Like, how does it feel to like be included in a lineup that is like that? influential and that fucking nuts uh it's cool there's a lot of bands that are playing that i've never seen like i've never seen my chem live i've i think i watched like one paramore song in australia but i think back then when our band was a band i was more concerned about like trying to find some whiskey or something to drink so i didn't really watch i'm excited to watch them now though like because i think i'll appreciate it a lot more than i would have back then but I, you know, I want to see like Jimmy World and stuff. Like those are the bands I want to watch. I mean, I play Jimmy every fucking show. Mm-hmm. Like I really go back to like be, and that, that's what I was saying is like, I really value that the album that you just put out is an album mm-hmm. because that's the way that I look at like clarity. I look yeah. at I look at it as a perfect album. Yeah. Um, I talk about it all the time on here. I'm sure that everybody's fucking bothered 
with me talking about how great of an album it is. Yeah. And now that we just put out singles, which I don't know, Carlos, when did they start calling fucking songs records? Because to me, a record is like a vinyl, a fucking whole thing. Yeah. Like when when did people start being like, I'm putting this record out and I'm like, it's a song. Yeah. Like when did that happen? I don't know. Do you remember when people started switching that shit? I don't. It was like a couple of years ago. Do you do you know, Carlos? It might be a hip hop thing. I don't know what it is, but now I hear everybody being like putting out this record and I'm like, whole whole album? Whole album. But like what I'm saying is like your the whole album that you guys just put out, solid. Thank 10 you. Out, ten out of ten. Thanks. Dude, I appreciate ten that. Ten out of ten. I like there's some really, really uh there's some really, really heavy shit in there. Mm-hmm. And then there's some really, really like thoughtful, thoughtful lyrics, thoughtful verses. Um and I think that that's what it grabbed my attention the entire time. Cool. Which is like what I want as an album. Right. Not just a song. Yeah. Did you guys think about like how this is all going to sound together? Yeah. Especially think, with like the, the collaborations. Yeah, we do now. We didn't used to back then. But, but now I think like a huge thing that I like to do is I like to go to the studio for a certain amount of time and then leave and then have those songs to listen to and just make sure they're right before putting them on a record. And if we have to go do more time in the studio, then we will. Um, I think like being thoughtful in that way is important. And it kind of started with the last record. Like it felt like a collection of songs that made sense together. Whereas this, this record is like kind of more so in that direction. Um, and, and also I just wanted to like write some songs that were fun to play live because you get tired of playing the same shit all the time. You know, I want to have like, I want to have a new set opener and I want to have like stuff like that. New closer, new, all those yeah. things. And I, I mean, I really heard it on this album. Mm-hmm. I really did. Like, I really, really, really did hear it on this album. I was, I am not gassing. I was really impressed with this. Thank you. Dude, it's fucking sick. Thank you. Uh, and I urge every single person to go and fucking listen to it. Um, October 14th. You're putting more songs out. What do you mean? Is it like I why am I what am I listening to? <laughs> well, we're we're doing another music video for a song called Be Happy, uh which will be like the final single before the record comes out. So, so you've put out a decent amount though, yeah. right? Yep. Okay, so you're there's... just like releasing like like six it's it was like six, five or six songs right now, right? Yeah. And then you're going to have a how many? Uh I think there's 10 or 11 on there why did you choose to put out half of the album first just to like get everybody fucking pumped um i don't know that's a label question dude i was just i was like because i was confused because i'm like dude this is like a perfect like fucking thing what are they yeah. gonna keep, like are they gonna keep going i like it yeah yeah i think that i think that it's important for people to know like what they're getting you know like remember when you were younger and you you heard one song and you're like oh i'm gonna go buy the record and then the rest of the record is just trash yep so like at least you can like hear most of it and decide like if you want to buy the whole record or not you know well i think you should i think everybody fucking like i mean as far as i i didn't know like i didn't you know i do about i do about as little research as Mm -hmm. i can because i try and like go into these things with being like this is what I like. This is what I know. I don't want to know about like the gar- the garbage shit. Like mm-hmm. I want to like talk about like things that are happening in real time. Yeah. And so I was like, I do. I did understand that you're like you have an album coming out, but I'm listening to the album. Mm-hmm. So there's more songs coming. Mm-hmm. Are you excited about like the ones that are coming? Yeah. 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 I think like well, like you said, it's an album. So there's like there's songs that we haven't put out a singles that I think are great songs, like even better than some of the singles, you know? Um, but that's, that's the cool thing about making a record. And that's the cool, that's the difference between putting out a single or an EP or whatever. It's like, you have songs that people will love more than the singles. I mean, did you get like, were you listening to a ton of different shit when you wrote this? Like, were you, were you listening? How, how did the, how does this songwriting process go now? Are you bringing in, stuff are you bringing in like i think you should write something like this now that you're like learning how to play guitar you're like yeah definitely you- i think in the future yeah i mean and it even comes down to like what producer we want to go to next like there's some names that i've been kicking around that i think would be really interesting like i know that we're talking about going in and working with james eha mm-hmm. which would be amazing i mean how would you 
sit still. <laughs> he worked on a Palais Royale song or record. I'm not sure which, but I, I got to meet him and because I had featured on one of their songs like way back in the day. And I feel like there was like a connection like pretty quickly. And dude, I love a perfect circle and the Smashing Pumpkins. So going in to like work with the person that's responsible for both those pieces of music would be insane and i know it's very guitar driven which is important you know really really guitar driven mm-hmm. those guys were motherfucking uh wh- what's the like what's the fucking orange the orange like uh boss pedal yep the that the, one where it's yeah. just like vzz. yep are you, talk, are you talking about the fuzz pedal? Yeah, no, 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 the one that's like the, the DDS cl- one, like the distortion pedal. Yeah, just like classic, f- or like the over, like Boss over. Yeah, overdrive. Look it up. It's like that super one. overdrive. And, yeah, distortion Hold pedal. On, I'm just looking up like the fucking like Boss orange. Pedal. I think it's DDS one. It's like uh, yeah, just the straight up Boss distortion pedal. Yep, is so fucking sick, and they really, 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 really nailed like. That like I don't know, may, I'm sure that they did a lot of other shit on like especially like Siamese Dream, but like that when you hear those first songs hits, you're like those first songs hit, you're just like that is that like that's yeah. like practicing in mega like pr- just having one one pedal doing that fucking thing and writing songs around that. Yeah. Um. You we did emo night Vegas. I think that was the last time that I saw you. Yeah. That was the first show that you guys have had had back uh, right. since the pandemic. So like a fucking, I mean, it was weird for us. Yeah, like it, it was weird for us. Was it weird for you guys? What the show? Yeah. Um, I don't look. I I was very grateful to play that show. I'm not a huge fan of doing one-off shows just because I feel like they're really uncomfortable. Like, I feel like we don't get into like our groove until like two or three shows into a tour. And then after that, we're like, great. And I hate playing festivals as one-offs when you've been home for a long time because you can just tell when like a band's been on the road for like two weeks and then they go to a festival. It's like their sets dialed. It's like easy for them. And then you see bands that go out there and they just flew in that day and they've been home from, it's night and day difference. Well-oiled machine. Exactly. You know, it's like also the relationship that you have with the guys, like, and like anybody in your band is like, you got to know what everybody's going through. Like what, how's that, how's Mm -hmm. that's going to relate on stage? Like I can just do the same thing with TJ. You know what I mean? If I don't see him, we fly in to do a thing and he's pissed about something. Then I have to be like, what the fuck are you, you know? Yeah. And then it takes a second to like really get into that. Yeah. But I mean, that's like what we're, we're doing like we're doing the when we're young stuff yeah which we're getting ready but we're doing it we're not doing like the official thing we are doing the official thing but it's like the fucking our faces are going to be on the side of the building it's real strange yeah it's a real strange thing you want to come by sure i'd love to have you fucking come yeah, by. yeah i mean i'm gonna we're gonna be chilling there what else am i gonna do yeah i mean like are you guys <laughs> staying at that hotel um i think my family's gonna come out for um the first two so we're gonna stay somewhere else. Get out of get out of the Dodge. Get out of Dodge. Yeah, I think I think there's like a couple hotels that are off the strip that have like pools and stuff. Yeah. That, you know, I don't want to be on the strip. Yeah, I mean, I think the the hotel that we're doing it at is not. I think it's a little bit off the strip. Mm-hmm. It's a five minute like walking distance to the festival. Cool. Yeah. I don't even know where the festival is. I mean. So like I, I also don't, but it's not on the strip, and like we're staying at, and doing this residency at the, uh, at the hotel that's like, where everybody is staying. I was, it's fucking, it's nuts. I it's like an unbelievable thing. I like can't believe that we actually get the opportunity to like. You guys got to do Coachella and shit though. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. How was that? Dude, it was, fucking, I don't know. What was the biggest show you've ever played? Uh, probably with One OK Rock in Japan. <laughs> Do you, how many people? As far were as there? like people. Yeah, how many people were there? Oh, shit, dude. Like, I don't even know offhand, but it was just insane. Like more people than I've ever seen. So other than like a festival, you know. Yeah. So like, I don't know. For for me, it was surreal. For doing this is actually surreal. Mm-hmm. Like all of the things that I get to do are incredibly surreal for me. So stepping out onto a stage where there are people who are like we love this, this is fun, and there's a massive amount of people. Yeah. I was just, I, I, you know, I blacked out for, like, 
uh, the hour that we did the show. Yeah. Because I was just like, I'm just going to do, I went into fucking uh, autopilot. I was just like, I just know how to do this. Like, this is fun and I wanted to have fun and I wanted to make sure the audience had fun, but it was fucking nuts. Dude. Yeah. Like that I was- I saw a, photos. It looks crazy. It, it was a nuts thing. And the cool thing about doing that was we got to bring in artists that never got asked to play Coachella before. Mm-hmm. Like, say my T's never got to ask, never play Coachella. Like, yeah. Papa Roach never got to play Coachella. Like, fucking Hello Goodbye. Never. They would never play fucking Coachella yeah. 303. Dude, it was great. We got to bring them out for like one song. Everybody like fucking knew it and was like so fucking pumped. And uh, I mean, that's that it is. This is it kind of leads back into my questions about your like, how do you pick your collaborations? Like, yeah. So Spencer has been a dear friend of ours for like a long time. I'm a huge fan of Under Oath. I mean, they're only chasing safety. I specifically remember like getting that album and just being like, what is this? Like it changed my life, you know? So, but getting to like tour around with him and like just be friends with him. Um, it was awesome to ask him to be a part of that song and just being nervous to like have him hear it, you know? Yeah. But like, you just like, dude, this is awesome. I'm stoked to like be a part of this. It's one of the heaviest breakdowns so far yeah. on the, on the album. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that just rocks. Thanks. It just rips, dude. Yeah, yeah, it's a fun one, dude. That's a that's a really fun song to play live. Like, I'm excited to have him come out and like do it with me. You know, it'll be great. Um, and then Charlotte, I saw an interview that she did, and she just was like, "I would love to work with Kellen." So I was like, "Done." You know, like let's let's do a song together. And that song that we did together, I love that one. That's like, I wrote that one away from my band when I was doing like my own solo shit and I remember writing that song and being like I have to give this to Sirens because it's too good to like just put on like a solo record or whatever um and then Be Happy with Royal was just kind of like a similar situation as Charlotte where like I knew that she was like a fan of our music and um I just love her like look and style and vibe and voice. So. There's not a lot of people who aren't fans of of your music, especially lately. I mean, like you, you know, like I talked to, to Vic a little bit about this, but like, mm -hmm. it's fucking King for Days. It was back to trending and shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. What What the fuck? What do you think? What the fuck? I think a good song is just gonna do well. You know, like that was kind of a lightning in a bottle thing. That song. It was like kind of a random just just so happened happen thing but right now like but why right now like why oh. why do you think that like we're back i don't know i also don't know i have I no know. fucking clue i i can't dude i i don't know anything about that i just show up and sing songs <laughs> i mean is it cool like are you getting like you know like is sleeping getting like a lot younger audiences because it's like starting to, to trend and, it's like, a little bit of both like we have a lot of fans that have grown up with the band and so it's cool to see like a lot of those people coming back to shows and you know sharing that with uh you know their loved ones or whatever or you know some of the people coming to shows have kids now that like the band so it's like it's cool to see that and then yeah we do have younger fans too that are just now getting into it so i cool. think that that's like a really beautiful thing. i think so like, too i've been watching like this whole thing and i'm, I'm just so happy that like rock and roll music is Mm -hmm. back because you remember when we had like that weird lull for a little yeah. bit we were like fuck what are we gonna do yeah I mean you ever thought about anything else that you could do besides music yeah uh, I did hair for a little bit I went to hair school did you yeah so I still cut my son's hairs hairs <laughs> <laughs> I cut like one or two hairs no I, I cut my kids hair and uh, that's basically it it's just like Casa de Quinn barber shop I shaved my neck for this interview I went to the store yesterday and and got like a razor and then yeah. I just did this because I've just been like letting it go I've just been a disgusting person yeah for the last like couple weeks because I haven't really had to do anything but come in here and like do this shit yeah that's great dude I have this weird dream about working in a grocery store yeah yeah because you like same people every day yep clock out it's like nine to five just like the normal just say hello yeah i love talking to people yeah so it's like i would see them every day that's like my that's my if all of this fails and i blow this up yeah and it goes to hell you can find me working at albertson's i mean look i i agree in a lot of the sense of like 
there is something about just having like a normal you go in you clock in you clock out and then you go home and it's like a normal life thing like yeah i like that i like it too but like have you ever <laughs> like but then like when when i do end up doing stuff like that i really really miss the fact that like all right we got to come in here do a fucking interview talk yeah. about music talk about the things that we like love and then i get to go be on calls with my best friends and then i get to fly somewhere and do a fucking show i don't know if i would do well at a grocery store stocking stuff i would well i'm bad at most things <laughs> like i'm bad at almost all things yeah you know like i don't i think i'm even bad at this like i think like <laughs> i don't know why amazon was like have a fucking job <laughs> like i think i'm like bad at all of it but like i don't i you know i just see the the importance and the and the value of like you know talking to every single person even if it's just like when i'm walking my walking the dog like I really look at it as a like a beautiful thing to know people as well as I can get to know them. I think that like you know connection is the opposite of depression. Yeah. And so I try and be connected as to as many people as I can, and I think this is the only way that I really know how to do it. Right. How is that like lyrically? Like on the new album, like you know you dealt with some like mental health stuff. Yeah. On there. Yeah, I still am. I think we're all still dealing with mental health stuff. I mean, the the name Complete Collapse and the album art, I think, kind of solidify, like, like what you said earlier is that we went through something, like, really strange as humans and then just kind of, like, went back to, like, normal life and then just did, like, we don't talk about it anymore. It's, like, it's this thing that we went through that was, like, pretty crazy. And I think that, like, that's what the album art means is, like, you got a dude sitting at the pool with his martini, but everything's burning around him. It's just like, ignore the thing, but just continue going on, you know? Dude, have you noticed lately that, that things are starting to get like a little bit fucked? Because I feel like we're dealing with the repercussions of not dealing with it. Yeah. Like I've noticed lately people are losing their minds. They're going a little bit fucking nuts. They're yep. going a little, like, you know, every day I hear somebody like, having you know and, and it's because i feel like we haven't been you know we we got we weren't able to we were you know we lived through like a bunch of tragedies and in, in, you know and at least in mine and in, in your lifetimes mm -hmm. like and this is something that we're currently still living through and we're trying yeah. to figure out how to process it that's why like you know and i met your daughter i was so impressed with the fact that she was just able to be a kid and not she might not have fully grasped the situation of what's going on right and she can continuously live but like people our age were like dude what the fuck dude we like chose our paths and now it might stop and like what yeah. are we gonna do like and i feel like now we're feeling the the brunt of it right you know where there's like where's the re and so like the album listening to the lyrics like i felt it like i felt that I felt that yeah it's a huge that's a huge part of that record and then also just like complete collapse within myself like I had two choices I could either completely collapse or become reborn and be like a, a newer like version of myself you know like my wife and I are like constantly working on our mental health and then also just like eating better and putting like good things in our body you know there's because, like, like working out, you have to make like a conscious decision to like do that shit. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah, it's really hard. It's really hard, but it's it's the best thing, you know? It's like I think that what the pandemic kind of taught me is that like all the stuff that you think is important isn't really that important, you know? I mean, and and I think like what is important is trying to be as present as you can. Like you were saying like my daughter is like she's just always like stoked and happy and like i want to be more like that you know i want to learn that from her dude i mean i it, it gave me the opportunity to like you know i'd never choose to do this but it gave me the opportunity to like spend time with my my parents mm -hmm. never in a million years would i ever decide to stay three months with my parents yeah six months with my parents and i did and i got to be so close to them that you know when they I got to know my parents as an adult. So we also got to like have a, uh, you know, form an online community 
that we wouldn't have had to do if it wasn't because of the because of the pandemic and like so I try always try and look at like the bright side of it I try and look at the positives that came out of it but I constantly bombarded with the fact that like we're still living in a really strange place yeah it's a really really strange place and like I don't know the amount of time like do you ever look at somebody and you're like how are you so fucking normal and so good like you're just able to do that I'm the opposite of that. Like, I, like, don't understand how people can just, like, do their day-to-day lives without thinking about everything. And, like, I really related to the album, like, in in that way. Yeah. That's why I just say, I wanted to, like, bring it up just for, you know, everybody listening. And, and, you know, it's like we're all kind of going through this motherfucker together. Yeah, I think so. Like, like you said, it's, like, kind of dark and twisty, the album, but, like... I always try to make our songs and our records like have some sort of light at the end of the tunnel because otherwise what's the I mean what's the point you know um like we play better off dead it it shows all the time and that's like a really dark song it's about you know like am I supposed to be here should I be here still and like one of the things I like to say before that song especially on this last tour is just like yo like if you are in a place where you feel this way like just know that you matter and you're important and we want you here and like you know the people in the room and then also us on the stage and I try to turn it into like this just because we have these thoughts doesn't mean that we have to be our our thoughts don't have to master us you know we can master our thoughts and change our lives and find a reason to live you know I mean I think I hope that the rest of the uh, album feels the same way that these last couple songs Mm -hmm. come out because then I feel like it will be a perfect album thanks i think you did a fucking killer job thank you um let's do a little bit of let's do a little bit of plugs let's okay. just plug it up cool um kellen quinn yes sleeping sirens let's hear it with first tour date that you guys are doing is what is that october i don't even know 13? i just hold on let's uh, just... i think it's before the 13th hold on let's just do this let's just fucking look it up I never know, like, when I'm going on tour until it's, like, a week before I leave. And then I start getting, like, my airplane passes and stuff like that. Yeah, on your phone? That's it. Yeah. October 11th. October 11th. October 11th. The record comes out on the 14th. I only know that because Nick had to say it, like, multiple times on the last tour. So now it's ingrained in my brain. The Complete Collapse comes out October 14th. Yes. First tour. These, like, intimate, awesome fucking shows that Mm -hmm. I would kill to go to starts October 11th. Kellen Quinn, thank you for uh, being such a, a nice guy and a great dad and a uh, thank you. an amazing like person. <laughs> I really, I really do. I wouldn't, appreciate I wouldn't it. go that far. I mean, uh, I try my best. You know. I feel like you're doing we're a pretty. All, we're goddamn, all trying our best. I feel like you're doing a pretty goddamn good job. Can you scream on command? Can I scream on command? Like, can you? Yeah. Like, is that something that you can like just do, or do you have to like warm up to do it? Um, no. I mean. I think that it helps to have loud music behind you. Yeah, no, I know. I wasn't asking you to do it. I was just like, are you like, are you able to just like out of nowhere, just like do it? Because there's like sometimes I'll just be like, fuck, I want to like scream. Yeah. And I know that like I need, I need loud music too. So I do it at like, yeah. you know, I'll do that at emo night. But like, I, I just always wondering people who like have such fucking powerful screaming voices. Yeah. I'm like, are you just able to just be like, um, Chipotle, I'd like this. Like, yeah, like, just I just scream in the drive like, through Yeah, like I'd love that order. Um, yeah, I guess. I I think also that comes down to like playing a few shows and kind of getting that grit back on there, you know? Yeah, I know. You gotta like. I'm not. I am not asking you to. It's just a. It's I have truly, a question for you. What is the question? Um, how do you go about picking your clothing? Because like one of the things that my wife and I love to do is just watch like all the outfits that you wear to like all your different shows. Like the emo night stuff? Yeah. I mean, me and TJ, like, throw it around. We, like, toss it around. Like, we have a really good relationship uh, about, like, I think we should do this. I think we should do this. Like, him and I disagree a lot. Um, I've always been into, like, clothing. Yeah. A lot of my friends, like, do clothing for a living. So I've got my group chat that has, like, and I'm like, should I do this? And they're like, not approved, not approved, <laughs> or like approved. And then, yeah. you know, like 
my you know my best friend owns a company called praying and it's like I think he was like posting a lot of stuff about like sleeping for a while like oh, cool. a while yeah so like I just kind of wear whatever he him and but he's also suggested some ridiculous shit to me right like where I'm like you are the only person that can wear this yeah like I can't do that I mean I feel like you could pull off a lot of different things like you wear some pretty unusual shit but it looks cool as hell <laughs> I mean I'm also like five feet tall you know what I mean so like I'm I'm also I'm, like pretty like you know i've got like a smaller than like an average like woman's body so i can like <laughs> you know I, i've never dude that's why i'm wearing like a shitty like torn like i yeah. never was able to wear just like size medium like whatever you go into the store so it was yeah. always a challenge yeah but i don't know i'll toss dude i have a whole closet if you're ever here you can come and raid just come it, to Okay, sick. Dude, you can absolutely come and raid okay, it. Okay, cool. I'm more than happy to, like, give shit away. Because I'm, like, I'll do it for a week, and then I will never wear it again. Yeah, dude, love it. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. It this was, was a blast. This was a fun one. Yeah. This is a really good one. Um, everybody go fucking listen to this album. Buy the album October 14th. Yes. Uh, and go see them. Sleeping with Sirens. If you can make it, I guarantee this show is going to be fucking amazing. Come hang. Come hang with them. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. We're done. <laughs> Let's do it. We're done.